What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see right there, just went for a drive, filmed a video, but I wanna do a cleanup on this because I don't know if you guys can tell, let's flip this around here. She is dusty. I don't know if that's gonna do a good job. Okay, you can kind of tell here on the roof, there's just a nice, nice layer of dust. This car is not driven in the rain anymore. It does not sit outside. So everything that is on this car is pretty much dust. So I'm gonna throw you guys on the head mount and I'm gonna show you how I clean my car safely without using a hose or running water. So I'm gonna pick you guys up in just a second on the head cam. All right, we are back. Hopefully I got the angle right. So first off, I'm gonna show you guys what I do. So product wise, these are just like the Kirkland towels. Um, I think you get these at any like Costco. They might have them at Sam's Club, but they're super cheap. I think it's like 15 bucks for 32 towels or something like that. So you typically want one or two. This car is really not that bad. So I'm just going to use the one for now. And then what is in this bottle? This is a 32 ounce, just generic bottle. And I'm using McKee's N914, which is like a waterless wash, clay lube, depending on how you dilute it, you can use that. I love this stuff. I also use Echo by CarPro. That stuff is really good because the 05 outside has car reload on it. And this car, I forgot, I think this car has a Just Car Power Lock Plus on it. So nonetheless, let's hop right into it. So what you're gonna wanna do is saturate your towel. Not a, not a ton, but just enough to make it damp. And then you're just gonna wanna liberally spray all over the car or all over the hood. So I like to do it this way, so that way it sits a little bit, it will emulsify, I think that's the correct term, or encapsulate, I'm sorry. It will encapsulate any of the dust. That's the beautiful thing about N914 is that it has very, very good properties when it comes to cleaning abilities. It does a great job at encapsulating the dirt. Now, a lot of people will use ONR. Now, when wiping the car, you could already tell it is gross, but we are applying zero pressure. I mean, just enough to stay in contact. Um, a very important thing about this method is that you want to stay in straight lines. You're noticing that I am not, you know, going in circles. I'm not inducing swirls. If anything, look at that, man. Woo, she is dirty. And then you flip the towel over and you just, again, do a straight line. Nothing crazy, no pressure. This product does not streak at all because we're going to hit it again with another product as a last step. So that... Is good but yeah holy moly i don't think she was that dirty I actually kind of figure she would be because i haven't washed this thing in probably two months now i never do a typical wash i always prefer to do it this way during the summer i'll do a regular wash but this because the car it doesn't really get any contaminants on the paint because i don't drive it in anything that's not ideal weather so i'm not overly concerned i do need to give it a decon bath before i correct it again next year now you guys can see the paint's pretty good it is not perfect reason being is that i had done a full paint correction on this car but then it sat out last winter and over that time period that i had a soft cover on it but it got loose and so with the wind it kept smacking against the car no deep scratches it just kind of swirled the crap out of the paint so gonna have to redo it again and that's fine so same thing we just work our way around the car just gonna saturate everything that we're gonna touch i like to do two body panels at a time so if i'm gonna do a fender i will do the fender door and then the a pillar now when it comes to the side of the vehicle you want to go straight down again like virtually zero pressure guys now, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh my God, Evan, you're scratching the crap out of the car. I promise I'm not. Now, this is not the most like, you know, safest and effective way if you're trying to keep like a car absolutely pristine with no swirls or scratches. But in my experience, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, you're not really gonna induce anything unless you're grinding it into the paint. Now, if you wanna play it super, super safe, you know, you can use multiple towels and every time you swipe over the panel, flip it over to a new side of the towel or just use like five or six towels. For me, knowing this car, I'm not overly concerned because it does need to be recorrected. So it doesn't really all matter that much to me. So same thing, we're just gonna repeat the process. And this does a great job of just removing any, any dirt, dust, anything like that. Whereas the 05, I filmed a video, but it was so windy that day. I had to scrap it. So I am going to do another video showing you how I typically would wash cars. 
that are a little bit more dirty because the 05 does sit outside, whereas this is just the garage queen. Now, after this panel, I'll probably flip this over because it's getting pretty gross. But the biggest thing you have to worry about is you want to work your way down. Now, I like to do the, I start with the hood because I feel like the hood is the thing that most people see right away. And then I will work on the horizontal panels because the vertical or the, hold up. I like to work on the vertical panels because the horizontal panels tend to hold onto dust and stuff quite a bit more. Now, I know, again, that's kind of against the grain of what everyone says. No, I get it. Again, this is not, I'm not claiming this to be the, the only way to do it, but I promise it does do a really good job. I haven't really used this all that much. I've only used it a couple times because I'm a big fan of Echo, but this is, this is doing a good job. I can see why a lot of people like it. Now, what you can do is you can try to wring this out. Let's go over it with my hand. I don't, again, this is just all dust. It's not gonna hurt anything. Now I know people are gonna be like, oh, well, when you break the brake dust goes in the air and it could land on the car, you're right. Again, this is just my way of doing it, but just be as gentle as humanly possible with it and it's gonna be fine. And plus this is nice, especially in the winter months because I don't know about you guys, I'm not trying to set up the pressure washer in these freezing temps and deal with all that. So this way I can just do a nice little wipe down especially because I want to do some night photos. So the car doesn't have to be perfect, but she was looking almost gray. <laughs> there was so much dust on it. I know some of you guys are probably like, oh, your OCD is going crazy and whatnot. But it's really all about um, the product you use and whatnot. Like this, I promise is not hurting the car. As deceiving as it is, it's not. This stuff is extremely slick. I mix it at a very high dilution ratio. I believe I did one or 10 parts water, one part product, which on that is almost the same as a clay lube. So this is extremely slick. I am not, again, applying like any pressure. So I'm just gliding it over the panels and we're just gonna stay in straight lines. No swirls, no circles, because that's when you're really gonna mar swirl scratch up the paint you're not really going to scratch the paint unless there's something extremely abrasive on there but this is pretty gross so now we're going to use the cleaner side and continue to work our way around and you can tell we're already like halfway done never do the bottom of the car until the end same with the wheels i use different towels for the wheels i never used to actually reuse my microfibers but now now I do because I'm an idiot for never doing that before. I would just literally throw them away. I'm not exaggerating when I say I've thrown probably no BS, at least a hundred towels away. Ignore the, the messy garage. I gotta clean this up because the Cobra is gonna sit here in the winter, but you guys can see we got the 4R70 for the car. We got converter. When I got it, the guy gave me like a, a two valve intake injectors. Uh, I think it's an engine harness. So if anyone wants that, literally DM me. I want it gone. I have exhaust in here for the 05. Those are the, the pipe bombs. And then I have a full GT500 exhaust in the basement. And I also have another exhaust for this in the basement, along with the AFS wheels. I have to show you guys that too, because I have quite a few things for this car in my room that I just didn't have time this year to get done. So lots of stuff coming for it. Again, it's my fault for waiting this long to start filming at the end of September, early October, and now winter's here, and so it's kind of a little pain in the butt. But we're almost done with all the major panels, and then we'll hop on over to the roof. Now again, if you want to, if your car is, you know, paint corrected and ceramic coated and it's in really good shape, I probably would take the extra step of, you could even soak these in a bucket. I've seen people do that with like O&R. Uh, that's a good method, but use several towels. I'm just using the one again, cause I don't really, I'm not overly concerned about this car. When the 05 was like a show car, um, then I would never do this. Uh, I would definitely do the typical, like I'd spray it down and then wipe it down the way I'm doing it. And that always worked really well for me. But as long as you use quite a bit of product, not gonna hurt a thing. 
I don't know if I ever talked on video about this, but the weird thing about this car is something had happened to it, uh, mainly the roof. I don't know what happened if it was like in a hailstorm. It's a clean title, so it shouldn't have been in an accident. There's really not much of an indicator that it was. Um, the previous owner, he had a fair explanation regarding the airbag being changed out. Um, so I knew that because these are very common to go out and there's something stuck here on the roof. What the heck is that? There we go. Watch that be bird poop. I just stuck my freaking fingers in it, but that went off. So he replaced it with the regular GT or V6 steering wheel airbag thing. And then every once in a while, I'll just wring out your, your towel. Going back over here. I can't stress it enough. I know this towel is super scary and you guys are thinking, holy crap, this guy's ruining it. I promise I'll take a light to it when we're done here. Even though, again, this is not the perfect car to be showing it because it got kind of beat up a little bit. But just to prove that I'm not destroying it, I will take you guys off the head cam towards the end of the video and show you that the paint is not trashed. Hopefully the lighting in here is okay and hopefully the angle's all right. I have it at the same angle as the driving because it took forever to get that angle right. Oh my goodness. Some of the videos you guys were like pointing at the ceiling, other ones you're all over the place. So finally got that dialed in. That's the nice thing about it being cold out too is the fact that wiping this down, you don't have to really worry about streaking much. It's not humid, so it's not... It's not really the smearing and whatnot, so that's a big plus. And then funny enough, not funny enough, but the garage door actually broke a few days ago. This weekend, it was a beautiful day. I think it was in the mid 50s. It was on Sunday and I was all stoked to come home and film some content. And sure enough, the spring on the garage door broke. So wasn't able to get the car out. They came and fixed that this morning. So that's why I was able to get it out today. Man, she's looking good. I'm so glad I got the dents taken care of on this car. That was like the worst thing ever. This car had a lot of little dents and stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's still not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a heck of a lot better than what it was. It's been so windy lately. That's why there's so many dang leaves in the garage. That's one thing I'm doing when we get a house. I'm definitely doing an epoxy floor. Because I really would love to somehow, ooh, sorry guys, just smacked you on the bucket, to wash my cars inside a garage. That'd be freaking sweet. Uh, never had the ability to do that. So that's on the list. Being a homeowner is going to be fun. It's going to be expensive though. <laughs> Especially if, uh, I don't know when this video is going up, but hopefully Tuesday I have uh We'll call it a meeting. And uh, if that goes well, which fingers crossed, I don't see why I wouldn't. Um, some pretty life changing news. And that's not to be me like exaggerating for YouTube, but genuinely it would be quite literally life changing for me and the direction of the channel, which route we wanna go down. So need y'all to keep your fingers crossed for your boy. Because, oh, is the exhaust still hot? No. Just got back from a drive. But, yeah, so fingers crossed. I'd be so excited if said quote-unquote meeting goes very well. Um, a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff would take place if that does come to fruition. You know, this car really is not that dirty for sitting for a couple months and the occasional drive. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Need to get the LED side markers. There's so many cool things I want to do for this car. I'm just torn at the power level what I want to do. Do I really want to... Do I want to ditch the Eaton, or should I say the Heaton? If you guys don't know what that means. Uh, pretty much it's an ongoing joke to these cars. That the Eaton gets super toasty, which it does. Uh, this car does have a heat exchanger on it, so that does help, but yeah, it gets it gets pretty toasty. Let's go over the bottom of the car since we're done with all the other panels. 
Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I need to get like one of those little holsters. Put this thing on my hips. I always put it down and gotta walk all the way around. First world's problems. First world problems, eh? Complain about walking around a garage. Ugh. She's looking good. So next, after this, we're gonna hit the windows. Even though the windows aren't bad at all. You're not gonna scratch your windows unless you take like a freaking razor blade to it. So what we'll do there is we'll flip this over to the smaller nap side. Man, you guys, I don't know if you guys can hear the wind outside, it's crazy. Totally off topic, but seeing the jumper cables right there. Anyone else have like a phobia of jumping a car? Man, that's that always freaked me out. I don't know why. Now I have like little jumper cable pack things. Those are a lifesaver. Uh, it just, it always scared me, man. I'll never forget, I did it once with my buddy. He was helping me out and I, I put it on and my genius self put them on the wrong one. So I did positive to negative, negative to positive. And it was, it was sparking like a mofo. So ever since then, I said, screw it. I'm getting a battery pack because I'm clearly incapable of doing such a simple task. But that was scary as heck. Another thing, I gotta get this weather stripping. I gotta make a, a long list. Of just all the little nitpicking, tiny stuff and just get it all done. Cause I wanna do some install videos. I am not mechanically inclined in the absolute slightest. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Honestly, I think there's gonna be so many bloopers of like me trying to do stuff. Uh, a few of my buddies offered to help do the spring install on the 05 because my buddies had helped previously when I did the SR springs on the 05. So they're gonna help me, I think, with the uh, sport lines. I'm so excited to see how that looks. Speaking of that, I gotta put my winter wheels on. I am not looking forward to that. Someone told me these Cobra windshield wipers are worth like a pretty penny, which is mind boggling to me. It's like a windshield wiper. How would it be worth anything? But I guess they're worth a couple hundred bucks. The more you know, I kind of understand now, like whenever I saw people parting these cars out, I never got it. I was like, why would you ever do that? But with how much all these dang parts are on these cars, it's literally sometimes like in my case, I could probably part this car out, break even, or even make a couple bucks. Granted, I don't have the T56, which is easily like three Gs, IRS is like 1500 but even a, a built SRA of what's in this would sell for probably close to a thousand. So I wouldn't be, yeah, it'd be about the equivalent value. Wheels would go for a decent amount. Motor goes for a ton, especially if you remove the Eaton. You sell the Eaton swap, that's three, four thousand. Shell, even just a shell of these cars without a cage or anything. If I sold it with the interior, I wouldn't take probably less than like 10 eight to 10 for it. So right there, I would already have made money. So who knows, I digress. So we've got the windows done, we've got the paint done. With the initial wipe down, next we're gonna go over it with bead maker. Now bead maker is very hit or miss for me. I, it feels great, it looks great, but it does collect a lot of dust. Now, I know people have said the remedy is to just constantly use new towels. And I guess that helps reduce like the static charge, but I'm not trying to use 10 towels for a last step product. I'm all about efficiency. Let's get her done. So now we'll go over the car. And again, you want to apply it next to like no pressure because this stuff just works in very, very nicely. The reason I do this is just because with the initial washing process, it leaves a little bit of streaks here and there. I don't know if you guys can tell. You see in the light, hopefully the angle's right. There's virtually no swirls in this paint. Like somehow some way there's not even though the winter kind of took a toll on it but it looks good let me see i have super bright lights in here hopefully you guys can pick that up but you can see there's virtually nothing like there's some very minor marring here and there but not bad at all so that just kind of tells me that my process isn't so bad and same thing here i'm not doing circles i'm still trying to stick with the the straight lines, whether it be diagonal, I try to keep it going this way. 
but you know, you do you boo boo, whatever works. But yeah, you guys can see there, hopefully. Like there's really not many swirls at all in this paint. Beadmaker feels so good though. I'm gonna have links to the stuff in the description. They're not affiliate links because I have no clue how to do that. So if you wanna buy any of these products, do it, do it. They'll work great. <sighs> Black looks so good when it's clean. And you guys can tell. See my towel? Nothing on it. Means that my initial wipe down, I got all the dust and dirt off. So now you can massage it a little bit and it's not gonna hurt it because there's nothing on there for it to scratch or swirl. Again, I'm gonna go in the same exact orientation I did before where, or I'm gonna go, oh, what's the word? <laughs> I can't remember the word. I'm going the same order that I wiped it down. Same panel by panel, I already sprayed that one. Thing with bead maker, you don't wanna use a ton. Less is more. Some people will oversaturate the towel and just do it that way, which is totally, totally fine too. I just prefer to spray it on the panel. It's just more gratifying. I feel like I know then that there's enough product to treat the whole panel. Man, this car looks so good when it's clean. I can't believe I almost sold it. I was really close at one point, several points, honestly. I was very close to selling her. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's like paints in really good shape. Oh man, I keep, <laughs> I keep smacking you guys on everything. I am so sorry. Another super cool thing about these cars that I had no clue was even a thing is the fact that these pillars pop off, like on the 05s, the S197s, that's not a thing. So, that is like super cool because this one i'll show you guys i have replacement ones i have replacement eight pillars in my room because that one where is it right here you guys can see that it's a pretty big rock ship and they tried to touch it up and they did a quite terrible job but now knowing that those pop off Easy fix, take those, get them painted, come home and just do it myself, pop them on and, and all good to go. Oh. See, every time I'm like, I wanna find something as a replacement to bead maker, but then I use it and it's just like butter. It goes on so smooth, you just flip over the towel. Granted, this towel is starting to get a little saturated, so it's not gonna buff off as good as it can. I have a third towel in my pocket that I'm gonna go start going over the panels with. So I got this one here. Just go back over it. That way you have no streaks. Beadmaker's pretty good at flashing off. So even if there are some streaks, they'll, they'll go away. Gotta do the tint too. That's gonna be a video. I'm gonna try to teach myself how to do tint. I'm probably gonna epically fail, but I feel like that's the best part of these videos, right? Got to give it, and it looks so simple and I get it. Cause I'm going to try, I forgot the dude's name, but his whole YouTube channel is like dedicated to doing tints and it doesn't look that bad. Can't be that bad. So I'm going to give that a shot. What else is wrong with this car? What, what else do I need to fix with old girl? I thought about naming the cars, but I feel like that's kind of cliche. This one would be like, gold digger or something something that takes my money this would be uh alimony that's what this car is because <laughs> takes all my damn money not really when i bought the car i knew it was gonna need a little bit of work and i did the upgrades or i had the shop shout out to mike post at dino tune mp great shop got the car running the way it should and this thing was a basket case had a lot of little quirks that they they got figured out so Super, super happy. They're gonna be the ones that eventually, if I decide to throw in the 4R, we're gonna do, they're gonna be the ones that do that. Where's my drive shaft? There's a drive shaft somewhere in here with that too. Part of me, now that I'm learning to drive stick pretty decently, I'm still slow, but I got it down. Oh, there's my drive shaft. I don't know why my 
my dad decided to put it up that way. It's freaking great. Um, nonetheless, got all that. People are saying that a stock 4R is going to handle what the Cobra is making right now. I've heard some people say a stock 4R70 can hold like 700. To me, that seems a little extreme, but I don't know. This car's only making mid fours right now. Although we could really turn it up. We throw on an, another pulley, get a fuel system, go E85. I think there's a few guys running low tens on uh, Eaton's with like a hundred shot. I would never do nitrous because my luck, something's gonna go wrong. Oh my gosh. Every time guys, holy moly. <laughs> I'm never gonna get used to that. Same thing when I'm editing videos and I try to click one over to go on the left side. I'm doing the before and afters and it never works. I don't know what I do more, smack my head on stuff or do that. I'm not going to lie, my head is throbbing because having this thing on my freaking forehead kind of gets heavy. You wouldn't think this little phone weighs that much, but if you all have ever held an iPhone 13 Pro Max, it's a mouthful. Uh, it's not exactly the lightest phone in the world and when it's like stuck on your forehead. Not the most, not the most gingerly thing in the world. Oh, oh another thing that go for, for crazy money is these mirrors go for like six to like 600 to like 900. Like who would have ever guessed that a mirror would go for that much? I know like the Ganadors or however you pronounce it, the JDM ones go for a lot of money and these are i guess like the the u.s equivalent the american equivalent of mirrors that go for absurd amount of money so we're almost done here guys we are just going to hit the roof front bumper rear bumper and the glass because bead maker is safe on all surfaces and then we're going to hit the wheels quick i'm probably going to use i'm going to find a, an already kind of dirty towel and hit those not dirty but one that i because you never want to reuse wheel wheel microfibers on your paint that's a recipe for disaster because brake dust is extremely abrasive you might as well just take a wire brush to your paint if that's what you intend on doing so, word of the wise, don't do that. I tried polishing these wheels. These are aluminum wheels. I want to get them to look like the chrome. I even bought the little, um, it's like the adapter for like a polisher because my, I have I have the Roops LHR 15 Mark II and then I have the Porter Cable and I got the adapters to do the one inch conversion pads on the Porter Cable and it's still just, it's too big of a machine. I can't get into the tight spaces. So I got this like cone shaped thing and I tried some wheel polish or aluminum polish and didn't really do anything. So got to do more research on that. Cause if I can really shine those up to match the same look as Chrome, I know it's not gonna be identical, but if I can get it close, uh, that'd be sweet. I got to find someone that does custom center caps cause they don't fit. And I'm sick of looking at a rusty freaking hub. But again, there's not much I can do. It doesn't look too bad. I ordered some off Amazon. They were just ever so slightly off. Because I think it's like 80, 88 millimeters or something or 83. It's a weird size. Not common at all. So it's another thing here. Oh. That's how you know you're out of shape when you're freaking tired from washing your dang car. Wiping it down. This poor front bumper needs to get painted so bad. So sick of having these license plate holes. It's gonna look so good. That when the fenders are done, this car is gonna look so good. I don't think I could ever sell her, man. The more I drive it, the more I fall in love with this thing. torn on what to add to the channel next because I don't know what I want to do with this car. It's so good right now that I don't want to mess with it power wise. 
but I wanna keep creating cool content for you because you guys love this car. So far, this is kind of the channel car, I would say. Granted, I guess my channel is SBT Evan, so why wouldn't it be? But the first videos I uploaded, um, the 05 ones took off. I believe the talking about just the V6, uh, the walk around last winter, that one hit like 3.5K views and that one's still climbing every day. Ooh, okay, I missed some spots there. Uh, yeah, that video is still doing really good. That's like my second most viewed video ever. It's my number one in terms of my cars. So I figured the 05 would kind of be the star of the channel because that car is a lot more obtainable and a lot more realistic for most folks. But I don't know. Every time I upload a Cobra video now, it's hitting two, 300 plus views in a couple days or a week or so. So I don't know. You guys really do seem to enjoy this car. And it, I feel like it's reassuring that it's not a perfect car. Far from it. It's just a clapped out shit box. No, I'm just playing. It's definitely not, but oh, it looks good. Step back, admire her. Yeah, buddy, that looks good. So I'm gonna end it here, guys, because y'all don't wanna see me clean the wheels. I'm just gonna spray it down, wipe it down. Video's been long enough, but thank you guys so much for watching. But seriously, if you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like, it helps me out a ton. Hate begging for stuff, but honestly, likes help my videos go to a wider range of audience. The faster the channel grows, the more cool stuff I can do to the car and get to share the car with more people. So it's a win-win. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate everything and I will catch you guys in the next upload. Later guys.